Hello and welcome back to the studio. I can't believe I'm saying this, but it is time to paint over this mural in my office. I have filmed against this mural for a long time, but there's, you can see there's a patch job there in the lower left. They've been too lazy to fill. Um, this beautiful mural has been an iconic part of my business. It's seen me through many different hairstyles, through various stages of my pregnancies, um, but it is time to just say goodbye. Um, it's hard to film against. You can see it looks kind of gray and makes me look like I'm ill. Um, or like if I am able to kind of capture some of the green, it just kind of messes with the rest of the colors. So it was time to say bye-bye. I did rope my husband into helping me out with this and um, kind of patching some of these holes, making sure everything was nice and even. And it was time for that fresh start. I was really stinking nervous for this. You can see I was like, what am I doing? Now for this entire process, you will see me use just regular interior wall paint. Um, I just find that that is the best to use. It sticks to the wall really well. You don't need anything special, which is another thing that I love. Um, so I'm kind of just going over everything. It helps to make everything nice and smooth and even, and it helps to give it a more consistent texture overall, which we'll talk about later in this video. I will eventually have two coats of paint on this wall and that will just help to have kind of a nice base for my painting. This will be kind of a similar style to what I did before where it's sketchy and it's more drawing like than like an oil painting or a watercolor landscape or anything like that. Um, but this will give me a good base. It will also serve as a fabulous eraser if I <clears throat> need to fix something which I might have to do a little bit later on. Um, so make sure you have your good base coat on. I decided to use two coats of paint um, just to really make sure that the mural before was knocked out and the texture was as consistent as possible, which if you're not painting over a mural, you probably don't have to worry about as much, um, but it's just something to keep in mind. All right, now that that base coat is on, let's talk about supplies for the actual painting. I like to use acrylic brushes that you can just get at your local craft store. This is a size 30, so it is nice and big. But you can see I like those stiffer bristles. This paint is very dense and heavy. So unlike watercolor paint, which if you followed my tutorials before, you know that I love to use watercolor, you don't want to use those flexible, heavy, soft brushes. You want something with a little bit more... Um, strength to it because again it's kind of an aggressive form of painting. This one is a size 8 so I will be using this one the most for this mural um, and again it's just a regular acrylic brush. Now to transport the paint around I like to use the lid of the paint can as my palette. Um, this way I'm not really using any extra supplies but I'm able to mix paint on here. There's already paint on it. Now obviously if you are mixing a custom color you might want to grab just a grab a piece of paper or a paper plate or something that is not going to affect your whole can of paint. But if you're just using paint that is straight from the can, you might as well use that piece. Um, another tip that I'm going to add in here, I like to add a little bit of water to my paint when I'm working on details like this. Um, it just helps to thin it out a little bit. Like I mentioned before, this paint is very heavy and kind of intense for this kind of painting. Now you can see here that I am working freehand and that's generally how I like to do my murals. They're drawing based, it's a lot easier for me, but that doesn't mean that I'm just kind of making it up as I go. Actually, if you look to the right and you'll see that I keep looking there, I have this sketch that I've created on my iPad. That doesn't mean that I don't make mistakes. Um, it just means that all of the major problem solving has been done beforehand and I don't have to like pull up a ton of different reference images. I'm just looking at the sketch that I have and going from there. Um, now the first idea that I pursued was this idea of these trees. I wanted it to be like really ethereal and romanticized where there were flowers blooming in it and you could see the different animals. I even had this idea of like adding a little bit of color and having just this full scene behind me. I even bought some of the paint, but it just wasn't quite working out. So I continued to pursue it, try and see like, okay, how can I make this work? How can I problem solve? And I was able to solve some of the problems that I had, but in the end, it just didn't end up working out as a whole. It wasn't fitting my style the way that I needed it to. And so after kind of stepping away, talking about it with my husband, we realized it just wasn't fitting the vision. So I completely started over. I did paint over completely the second mural that I painted, but as soon as I started working on a different idea, which again, I also had a sketch for, and I spent some extra time kind of planning it out, 
it just felt a lot more natural. So if you're like really struggling through your mural, maybe take a step back and think, you know, is this my style? Am I trying to be somebody else? Um, maybe just kind of start over if you need to. Now I'm, I'm prone to starting over. So if that's not you, don't feel like you have to go ahead and continue to work through it. So even though it felt more natural to work in this second style, in this second composition, and it was a, just a better composition for me overall, I still had to use a couple of different tricks in order to get the layout the way I want it to be in order to get the scale right, and I'll address that in another video. But for this section right here, I actually drew out in pencil just kind of where I wanted everything to be beforehand, um, and that helped a lot when I went back later and I started to apply the paint. And at this point in the painting process is when it became really important for me to add that little bit of water in order to get a little bit of um, just a better texture overall for my paint. So you can see here the wall is textured and so if the paint got too dry it would kind of skip over the texture where if I would add a little bit of that water to it it kind of start to blend in. Now too much water it'd be too light of a wash which you can kind of see there on the left but it helped a lot to add that little bit of water in order to get the paint to flow correctly. Now one thing you might be noticing as you're watching me paint is that I am even at this point in the mural I am still looking back at a reference image or pulling whether it's photos of you know my original sketch or photos of actual flowers or photos of previous flowers that I have drawn in the same style so the same type of rose that I was illustrating here and I'm continuing to look back at that and I'm using the techniques overall that we talk about in the flower drawing challenge and if you haven't taken my free mini course it's five videos with just drawing tips and that would help you a ton if you were going to try and tackle something like this um, so I'm just kind of using those techniques and just kind of the things that I talk about in that in those videos in order to create this mural. So I'll have those linked down below if you need some help there. I'm also using some techniques like the negative space in between each of the petals like I talk about in a different video that I have which is just talking about loose flower watercolor painting and so we talk about using negative space there. I will have that link down below as well. So if you're having trouble with making flowers like this or you just really want a little bit of practice before you jump into a larger piece like this, I will have I recommend either of those resources and I will have those linked down for you below. And here is the mural after I've gotten the white finish. This took two coats because again, I would wet down the paint and sometimes I'd come back and it wouldn't be quite dark enough, but I'm really happy with where it is. I really like the composition, the way it flows, the way the flowers are dancing around, but I wanna add a little bit of a pop. So what I'm doing is I ended up taking a little bit of brown and mixing it in with the same creamy off-white color that I was using for the flowers themselves and I started to do kind of an outline and what I love about this is that it was an opportunity for me to show off my drawing which is more my strength rather than the painting itself the drawing is really where I shine and so having this outline helped to define everything helped to make everything pop the way I wanted it to I will admit I was really scared and when I did that first flower which I ended up having to go back and do over again just to make it a consistent style is that I was really unsure about it. I actually called my mom and I was like, I think I ruined the wall and kind of panicked about it. But I decided to, let's just keep going. And I was, I like set a timer and I was like, for 15 minutes, I'm going to keep going and just see how it looks. And when I stepped back, I knew that I loved it and it was exactly what I was going for and it had worked out well. Um, so that is something if like you're kind of running into trouble and you're not sure it's working, set a timer and just keep going and just trying to like really push through because sometimes you can push through. Sometimes you do need to just like start over like I did earlier. But sometimes you just push through something hard so that you can see, okay, this is how it will look bigger picture. Um, so anyway, all I'm doing right here is I have a little bit of paint mixed up onto a scrap piece of paper, or I think it's a paper plate, and I am adding some lines and some definition. Again, this is my strength. This is what we talk about in the flower drawing challenge, and it is really what makes this wall pop. One thing that I love, though, is that that negative space that I left, that blue, helps to add a little bit of depth and dimension. It makes the flowers look a little bit more 3D, a little bit more alive. And the brown contour or outline helps to add that little bit of realism and that kind of feminine touch that is so central to my style. 
So this outline part took me about two days or two nap times if you're a mom like I am, but I think that it turned out so well. What do you guys think? Do you miss the old wall? Do you think I'm crazy for redoing it? Do you like this wall better than the other one? I would love to know down below. And if you are not already subscribed, I do a lot of art tutorials here on YouTube, whether it be painting, drawing, or wax seals, or murals like this one, and I would love to have you along and your commentary, your input, and your own experience as well. Either way, I hope that you're having a wonderful day, and until next time, happy painting!